tonight is about raising a bit of energy and understanding maybe some of these terms that we're using and understanding the relevance in this life where we thought we could buy everything and really some of the best of this stuff is information and knowledge. Jaginder Marquita run the Tree of Life. Um, so go on the website, they do a lot of events and a lot of support and raw food. Um, way of life, I suppose. The way of life. Uh, they spoke a couple of times here and they're a wonderful friend. So let's uh, give them a bit of a Welcome everybody. We would like to start with just one minute of silence. So you just basically relax in your chair. And make sure that your feet are really grounded on the floor. Or the, uh, that's fine. And make sure that also you are not crossing anything. <laughs> and that energy just flows. And that you Spine is straight, not rigid. It is very straight, flexible. And you can really feel all the breath and the energy just kind of flowing through. Just close your eyes gently. And let's just take a deep breath in together. And letting go. Just gently bringing your awareness back to your body. Just gently make a little move inside your body. And when you're ready, just very, very slowly opening your eyes. Coming back into this room. Just see everybody. <coughs> Choose one new friend and give them a big, big, big smile. Just welcome them. So let's have a stretch. A long day. Each line is a 
put your hands on the shoulder in front. Just in front of you. Just give them a really nice touch. You feel them. Just take a deep breath in. And out. And give them a really nice massage. <laughs>
Exercise with our clothes on. So just put your hands out like this. You got it? And then, and then you're going to slowly bring them together. intelligent. <laughs> but the right thumb on top is a sign you're more sexy. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. But seriously, <coughs> try and try and cross the fell over. How's it feel? Oh uncomfortable. Yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. 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 It feels alright. Yeah. 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 Depends where your fingers are gone. If it feels alright you can be sexy and intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, but it's all about, it's all about trying something new. No, that feels wrong. Right. Yeah. 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 <coughs> what you're comfortable with, yeah. Yeah, it's your habits, isn't it? Mm. Habits. So you, your comfort zone, everything, everything inside is your habits. It's what you're used to, and then outside of it is something new. And the, and the same thing applies to sex <coughs> and the sexual energy as well. That if you if you do the same thing over and over again, you'll get the same experience. But if you want to try an expansion in terms of love and relationships and sexual energy, all that stuff, you have to try something different, something new. <coughs> so what we're looking at is expanding and trying some new ideas and some new concepts and sharing some, some different ways of doing things uh, today. But we won't, we won't stretch you right at the comfort zone today, so <coughs> for the next exercise, please take your clothes off. Yeah. Yeah. But we would love you guys to ask us your questions about tantric sex. So give us your questions, and we will do our best to answer your questions about tantric sex. What is it? What is it? Yes. What is it? Okay. That's great. So what is it? Go on, keep firing away, keep firing away. Does it involve a vibrator? Else <laughs> 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 we can't take you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Tan, treat, vibes, you know. <coughs> some vibes going on there somewhere. Why was it? Does it involve sex? <laughs> 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 It's a great questions. Now keep on finding the questions that we're at, we will do our best to answer them. What's the difference between normal sex and tantra? What the difference? What the difference? <laughs> Any other questions? What's it got to do with the uh, higher consciousness? Higher consciousness, good question. Yeah. Would you recommend it? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Would you recommend it? It's a, it's a good question. <laughs> Following on from consciousness, what's it got to do with creativity as well? Uh, creativity. Recommend it. Would you recommend uh, C O M O? Just yeah, say great. anything, we know what it is. Creativity, creativity, fantastic. <coughs> oh, sorry, uh, can, you, can you reach climax? Can you reach climax? Yeah. How many times? How many times? Um, once. <laughs> Can you reach climax? That's it? Yeah? How many times? How many times? Yeah, we've got another one over there. Is it true that uh, it was just a rumour about Sting? Sting. It's a rumour about Sting. <laughs> just a rumour. <laughs> Rumour. Just, just put sting down. Yeah, sting. sting question mark. <laughs> okay. I think we've probably got enough. We can have later. We can have, yeah. Anybody? I think it's probably enough. Yeah, because we're going to. Okay, first of all, we'll just share a bit about our story. Uh, so we we were we've been studying tantra for the last four or five years with our tantra teacher who's Sarita, who studied with Osho in India for 26 years, a uh, very spiritual form of tantra, and uh, so we did a whole seven levels training course with her, and and once we we trained with her, we started teaching it in Birmingham uh, about three years ago, and so that's our experience. Yeah. We, we both had experience as a single, to do kind of a single tantra, or tantra for singles, before we met. So we kind of knew that we would love really also attract a partner, that we can practice that together. But it's really open for anybody, as a single, as a couple, you know, you can, and you can also start from wherever you are, you know, wherever you are on the your own kind of level. <coughs> so yeah, and it was mostly about really you know, finding ourselves. Yeah, finding really you know how it is possible to have really beautiful relationship on all levels and not be scared <laughs> about sexuality generally, yeah, and how to actually <coughs> express the generally the sexuality in the relationship as well. Right, so what is tantric sex? Okay. So, so who's had sex in the room? Put your hands up. Has anybody had sex? At least once. At least once. Oh, it's great. Is that everybody? 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 Okay, so, so, so anyone had an orgasm in the room? Put your hands up. Orgasm, yeah. Hey! <laughs> okay. So, 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 who's had one of those kind of really mind-blowing orgasms? You know, when you're one of those mind-blowing, great. Some people have mind. Can you just, can you put it into words when you have one of those mind-blowing orgasms? Does it feel like? Yeah. It's kind of like <laughs> with women they have out for me like it's like you know you can have like a quick one when they're the outside but when you get a body one yeah. it's like it's like um, okay when 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 you, when you climax normally right from like just outside stimulation like from the uh, yeah then it kind of feel up when you when you come it kind of feels electric like and you can't touch it but when you get a body one it kind of rolls over you don't actually peak it like kind of rolls over like a lot of times and then you peak. That's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's actually it's quite a spiritual experience, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this yeah. is where tantra comes in because actually, the sexual energy and the spiritual energy is all interconnected. That's why in India, that tantra as a form of spiritual awakening came about because they realised 
that the sexual energy was a doorway to opening up consciousness, mm -hmm. that that energy, which actually gives birth to life, it's the life force energy, is also the energy which, you know, is running through us, and which we can use to awaken. And so it's a very, very spiritual practice of using the sexual energy uh, to awaken through, through, through the sex. In the chakras, though, isn't it regarded as, as the, one of the lower forms? Is that right? <coughs> Wow. Well, I'm new to that. Um, the energy is, 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 is in the lower part. Mm. But I don't know if you want to talk about lotus and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. A bit. Well, um, <laughs> if we talk about tantra, this is probably the first question as, as well. What is the tantra? And, you know, it can't actually be totally described, but if I try, it can be described as a science, as an art, as a life style or life approach. It's something that appears from being totally present and total, mm -hmm. absolutely total in all levels. Yeah, so really integrating everything, the physicality, emotional, you know, like the mental, the spiritual, you know, the consciousness, the love, every single thing, and especially spirituality. So it's basically, when we are talking about sexual energy, it's just part of us. Yeah. But if we really embrace with all, if you know about chakra as well, you know, really kind of the full body, you know, the full body really experience, then it's it's actually just starting somewhere there. And yeah, very beautifully, kind of symbolically, it's described as a lotus. You know lotus? Just kind of floating above the pond, yeah, on the pond. And it's just, it's just brilliant, it's just beautiful, it's just kind of a magnificent flower. You could stare at it all day long. And it's just like open towards the best, you know, best of it. But actually, the lotus is coming, you know, and growing from the root. And the roots are in the mat. And, you know, you can see that actually we are very much afraid of sexuality. You know, feeling it as a something like dirty or not touching, not really talking about that most of the time. But actually from that, you know, that's the whole creation of something <coughs> phenomenal. The openness, the real maturity, you know, to something complete, something absolutely integrated. You know, within the mat there is the stalk which is basically growing about. And actually, I think the lotus is blossoming only just a few days, maybe a day. Yeah, so it's something which you're really waiting and waiting and waiting and really, you know, kind of let it grow, let it grow, let it build, let it be. And it just opens and it closes and it just opens and it closes. Yeah. So it's something which doesn't have any kind of achievement, it's just there all the time. Yeah. So basically, with the spirituality, if we really have healthy you know, awareness of the spirituality, which generally we don't, because education is still not there yet, yeah, for all true. of us, yeah, like really being educated <coughs> about the energy, how to rise to energy, and you know, s s basically starting being aware of Kundalini energy and really, you know, build on this energy, which really is for me is the sexual energy is the most powerful energy we all have and it's the most creative and transformative energy we all own. So it's just so beautiful. And you really, really need to know how to work with that. Because very often when it arrives, you know, we are just kind of scared, like, oh, this is something I don't want to even know. <laughs> you know, I don't want to feel very often. You know, sometimes it's the misunderstanding, exactly what you said, it's just so beautiful. Because from there, you can really kind of flow. Mm. You know, it's just overflowment. It's not like, <gasps> you know, that's no. it. It's just overflowment. And it's just beautiful because you really go with this flow and overflowment as much as you allow. Yeah. And it can be in, in integrated, but also kind of involved in any activities, in daily activities, in anything basically in anything. Yeah. Yes. You women are very lucky. 
Am I being presumptuous no, there? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm just... That's your question. Oh, is it, was, it, was, that, was that the question? Well, I'm just saying. Is, 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 is he's unluckiness. How lucky you are. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, men can have a lot more pleasure out of sex, you know, uh, because, you know, ejaculation, after ejaculation, men's energy drops down, isn't it? And very often, men go very quickly to ejaculation as an habitual pattern, and then they totally their the whole energy field just drops totally. Yeah, when you're when you're able to stop doing that, you your the, the sexual pleasure you, you experience in sex dramatically increases. And actually what happens is the man becomes much more conscious, much more powerful. Because what happens is that the, in that continuous ejaculation, actually your energy field is dropping, 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 dropping. Uh, your energy is going down and you actually you literally numb yourself out. You know, you numb yourself out. But when you use that sexual energy to actually empower yourself as a man, you become incredibly much more powerful in the world, and much more transformational. And, you know, you know, what you can experience in lovemaking is much, much greater. I mean, we were laughing about Sting, you know, with six hours of lovemaking and all that kind of stuff. But once you take conscious control of your sexual energy, then the whole sexual act becomes some much more deeper, much more conscious, and much more... Uh, uh, transformational experience uh, and so actually men can actually have tremendous sexual experiences you know, uh, you know as, as much as women want to take conscious control of their sexual energy if you look at if you look at animals you know <coughs> when they're de-sexed you can control them when they're neutered you can control them but when the sexual energy is really but, but, but without, without doing that, you can't control them, you know. If you are continually allowing your sexual energy to drop or to be weakened or you you know, then you are going to weaken yourself as an individual. You'll be less powerful, uh, you know, less creative, you know. And so, for a man, as much as for a woman, you can use your sexual energy to totally free yourself. Totally free yourself. It's the most powerful energy you have in your body, is your sexual energy. If you can use the most, if you can tap into your sexual energy, you can transform your life. Because that is, that is the source, <coughs> that is the most powerful source. You know, and that's why the yogis were using it in India, you know, to awaken into consciousness. Because they realized that it, it, it was the most powerful source that they could use uh, to awaken. Uh, and, so, and so, yes. It does involve sex, but it also involves your whole life. You know, do you want to be powerful in your whole life? Do you really want to express yourself in your whole life, your creativity, your energy, your passion? Yeah, then you need to use your sexual energy in a conscious way in everything. But the sex we are talking now about, it's not like sex sex, it's like exactly. up to 11 minutes. Oh my goodness, this is too much, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's something which really is very sacred. It's very um, a sex which is very conscious sex, yeah. So you know what, I, what we were saying: the education on this level where we are, it's very often very uh, in a way that if the woman really, you know, is going for her real sexual, you know, sensual energy, you know, and really, really embrace that. She becomes very wild, she becomes very beautiful, she becomes totally uncontrollable, unpredictable. And that's very scary for many men. That's really scary. And then we call them whatever we call them. And you see that that's something wrong with us. It's there for men. Like, you know, you should be serving men for him to kind of, you know, get done, you know, just kind of ejaculate. And again, there is no pleasure for any of those people. Not for both. Not for, any not for both. both. That's true. And it, it's actually totally the reverse. Mm -hmm. Totally reverse. That actually the man, you know, is supposed to really train and kind of maintain this energy, you know, to really not kind of like, like an, you know, up and down, but really, really 
going with the flow. And that's something which you really need to train, which you really need to be programmed into that. Like program, not program, really learned, you know, how to maintain this energy and how to work with this energy. And it's just so beautiful because there is the communication in between those two people. How many times you spend three, four hours with someone in the bed and you really communicate of your feelings? You know, you really, you know, it's about like you're having amazing time. You maybe even, you know, are still in the bed and you just kind of have candles around. You know, all those senses are basically involved. You know, the smell and the light or dark. You know, all those kind of contradiction there as well. You know, peaks and valleys. But you don't go like that's that's the peak and by, or it's the valley and by. It's just it's just really going that way. It's beautiful dance in between those two people. It's becoming amazing. It's becoming something you never forget because you always experience something else in this. Yeah. And it's really beautiful because then the man finally also achieve the you know kind of <coughs> feeling that he can really fulfill not only his desires and his sexuality but also the feminine side as well. You know, really kind of go you know kind of in the kind of meet halfway. Yeah. And it takes a lot of courage. It takes also a lot of commitment in the relationship. And very often we're really kind of stuck on a level that we think that we know what we do and kind of it feels right. But it's just the pleasuring, kind of it's really just the you know the feelings, the emotions. Chemical release. Chemicals, yeah. <coughs> so, you know, the normal sex, it's fine, why not? You know, it's fine, totally fine. If you just, you know, you just say, Oh, let's have kind of sex <coughs> on the kitchen table, whatever. It's great, it's fine. It's brilliant, it's the excitement. But there is also something else which we all really long for, something which really includes all of us. You know, the entire body, mental, emotion, spiritual side of us. And if you think of it, when you really come to reach this level, you lose the perspective who is the woman and who is the man. There's the absolute divine oneness. And that's, that's an achievement. That's something beautiful. And if you see the Tantra is really about contradiction all the time. Because you're working like day, night, bad, good, man, woman. You know, something like that, slow, fast. But actually, everything is good. Everything is perfect as it is in different way. If you think that you really have to catch your bus in the morning, you have to be very fast. If you really want to flirt with someone who is just getting no, you want to be very sensual and very slow. Yeah. Or you want to do something which requires your you know, precise kind of awareness, intention, and really nice kind of detail, you know, the sense for detail, you really slow down, don't you? But sometimes we kind of like we don't know what we're actually supposed to use at some situation, especially between each other. So we really need to find the level of being very present and total, and especially in relationship. And, and it always starts, what I'm saying as well, you know, why we really love doing Tantra on our own, because it actually brought us together. You know, as a single, when you do the Tantra, you really start having more awareness of the other sides, of your own self. So you really find more and more of yourself, your, you know, everything, of your sexuality, of who you really are. And then you also <coughs> are not in the trouble so often, because you know who you are, so you know who you are approaching, or who would you like to approach. So you kind of have much more clarity as well. So it's really a combination of everything, yeah. And I know that Osho was the kind of tantric master, he said like, you know, Tantra is the yeah, sayer to everything. You know, basically saying yes to everything in a very, very you know, pleasant way. Yeah. yeah, in Tantra, you literally fuck your brains out. <laughs> <laughs> but you think about it, you go to that place of no mind, you know, when you're in that peak sexual place, there is no separation, and you go to that place of oneness naturally, <coughs> 
and that's why it's the doorway, the window to awakening. Mm. Now there was there was a whole brainwashing done throughout the ages. Uh, you know, uh, you know, as, as soon as the sexual energy was you know, was, was being used or whatever, you know, the churches came in, made it all taboo, <laughs> made it all wrong. Sexual energy, nothing to do with God. You know, completely said it was all you know, you know, dirty and bad. No spirituality there at all. And then the whole act was just create, made by society as just a physical act, completely devalued. And then, and, you know, and, then, and then when you look at today's society, it's all, it's all kind of just made as a physical act, totally without any spirituality, <coughs> without any consciousness at all to it, other than the physical experience. And, it, and all, of the, all of its power was totally stripped away. Yeah, and we've all been brainwashed into making it such a superficial experience, which actually then lowers our energy. And what we, you know, what Tantra is saying is that this is actually one of our most important heritages, the sexual energy, and and you know we need to use it to empower ourselves, you know, and we can use it, and it is an incredibly spiritual energy. It's a very very consciousness raising energy uh, if we if we use it appropriately. So it's a re-education, which is what the Tantra is doing, re-educating people back to empower themselves. With their sexual energy, uh, and get, and get re, re in touch with that again. Yeah. I, I know that you know tantra is a you know, when it started, it's about five to seven thousand of years ago. So we don't know exactly how or when it started, but very often they say it started really before any kind of religion, any kind of practice started, because one once the religion or one kind of practice started, it got some rules, it got some restrictions, got something, yeah. But Tantra is really as simple as it is. And I know there's many different types of Tantra which were, you know, kind of built on on different experiences like meditation and with other basically, even those kind of religious or spiritual practices. But the really, really, you know, deep down start was that it's just absolutely amazing lifestyle, life approach. There was nothing as more simple as that. Really being present, what's going on every day, and allowing everything. Yeah, allowing the interaction, you know, with yourself, with the others, with the society, with the community, and being very, very conscious. And as you probably know, like if we don't have government tomorrow, we probably would get totally chaotic, <laughs> if not totally, you know, destroyed. More free. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. More, more freer? <coughs> well, I don't know if we would manage tomorrow. <laughs> That's the question. <coughs> I know we would all love that, but how much we are so programmed that we really lost this, you know, this real sense of knowing, you know, sense of knowing who we are, sense of knowing what's our purpose, sense of knowing what's the conscious decision for any next step. Yeah. So that's how basically this coming as well back, because as I remember, uh, the Tantra is just kind of um, experience kind of rain, renaissance, let's say, in this time. Because if you think of it, now, nowadays, we start really, really thinking and living on four legs. You know, when you have table, you have four legs, and it's the most stable kind of table, isn't it? So you have, you know, you have awareness about your body, physicality, mental, emotional, and also spiritual now, more and more. Can you see that? So we are very, very stable. So actually it's coming back because we can really work with that. We kind of can embrace all four aspects of our life without any worries, without fears, more and more. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I remember also, you know, when it was thought, Initially, it was really thought this this secret, you know, how to really use this sexual energy and this creativity from that and everything, to very much everybody, but also especially to people who were leading. And only later, there were leaders who would know about that, but wouldn't only use that, but also would disuse <coughs> that. Yeah. It was interesting. Tony Blair's wife, Shelley Blair, had a had a. Um, Healer in Tantra, uh, Carol Chaplin, I think. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and it was quite, you know, mocked a little bit at this time, but you started to look at these leaders and yeah. 
some of the things they Well, I really know that some leaders who really totally you know, misuse that, mm -hmm. they could really use their energy to become an amazing artist, an amazing piece of art, art in the world. And they probably didn't see that the way, yeah, the direction. You know, sometimes when you have this energy, this power, you really want to lead and want to kind of, you know, the ego is there as well. You yeah, know, and the ego is always there. Mm -hmm. It's just being aware, where is the ego? What is the ego? And where is the power to really change the world, to make a difference in a good, really positive way? And that's, you know, that's where you are on the level where the choices, you know, appear and you have to make a choice. <coughs> and, you know, we make all choices every day, sometimes are wrong, sometimes not. But generally, I really believe there is nothing wrong with anything. It's just really learning and learning and learning and really finding, you know, what is the right choice for me. Because nobody can tell you what is the right choice for you. Can you see that? Yeah, and you know, the transformation you experience when you take <coughs> conscious control of your sexual energy does not stay in the bedroom. Yeah. You know, it bursts out into all aspects of your life. So in terms of higher consciousness, in terms of creativity, uh, you know, in terms of healing, you know, all areas can start to shift. That may have been stuck for years. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember I was stuck for years, you know, in terms of relationships and finding a, you know, a partner and all that kind of stuff. I started doing some tantra work, it shifted stuff that I've been looking at for years through books and psychology, which hadn't been shifted. You know, I really had a dream of leaving my office job and doing what I love, which, I, which I've been talking about for 10 years and now we get around to it. You know, we started doing the tantra, we started to shift a lot of, a lot of energy and, and heal a lot of stuff. And then we started doing the Tree of Life. You know, our next event, at the end of, at the end of February, we just booked, it's going to be the ICC. Uh, on Broad Street, 29th of February, and we've got Lorna Byrne coming to do a message of hope from the angels. We've got 800 people coming, you know, at, at doing an amazing angel event, uh, you know, in the middle of the ICC, and you know, and... Uh, it's mind-blowing, really mind-blowing. Yeah. Even we just kind of stay for what's happening. Really. And, so, and, so, and, and yeah, uh, yeah, so what, what I'm saying is that it can shift things it can reach places that nobody else can reach. So, but you know, it can shift things in your life that may have been stuck for ages, but the, the sexual energy is so powerful, it can literally just burst through those things. And so when you take conscious control of your sexual energy, it can truly transform your life. And that's the power of the Tantra. That it really is the power of the Tantra. And that's you know, why people like Sting and these other people, they're very, very creative. You know, these musicians, you know, they're pouring out into their creativity because they're, they're realizing conscious control of their sexual energy is something which they can pour out then into their music, you know, into their songs, into, you know, in, you know, into whatever they're doing. You know, very often there is this kind of about the men, yeah? Uh, just a little example, if someone really doesn't know how to work with this energy, you know, you can be aroused, <coughs> let's say, in the, in the, at the work, you know, by someone, some other colleague or whatever like that, and can use the energy just thinking of her, you know, how it would be to have a sex with her, you know, something like that. But you can actually, actually really cultivate the energy and really bring the creativity from that, how you were excited, you know, how it's the new feel of the energy, because it's always new as well, new people, new energy. And you really can cultivate this energy to something very positive, to really bring the energy into your next project, something like that. So actually for men, it's, it's, it's the place where to be in contact all the time, the sex. This is the place you really need to be very conscious and be in contact with that. For women, it's more around breasts and you know, nipples. But it's again, it's just like where you actually, you know, it's like the, the computer. That's your hard drive. <coughs> yeah. That's where you really get the impulse. <coughs> and that's only the question, am I choosing to do something really wrong because, you know, your wife probably wouldn't be very happy, but also you won't be happy because it was just the momentary, you know, kind of physical, you know, you didn't know what to do and very often it would be that <coughs> you hurt or you really transform and cultivate into something just amazing. It, it's similar to eating a, a big box of biscuits or a box of chocolates and yeah. the time and that instant sensation feels like gratification. But
for about 15 seconds after you've met the last of the good ones, you sort of go, I didn't, I didn't really need to do that, to be honest. You know, it's a bit of selfishness and ostentatious. And it is, it is. Eckhart Tolle talks about the ego of sex, though, in, 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 a, in not a negative way. Eckhart Tolle says that you can have the ego of sex, can't you, as, 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 as a detrimental thing as well. It's, you know, do you know what I mean? There's an angle there that I, I you know, think can be, I don't know, I'm, I'm hard to say. Look at rap stars and footballers. And and right to do it. If, you know, <coughs> if, you know the, if you know the other way, you know the consciousness of it and, 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 and the deepness of it, how you can get, you deserve the right to have that, that, that animal kind of instinct, but you, it's like, yeah. Mm. It's, all it's, orgasm, it's orgasm without the mess if you want it to look. <laughs> without touching. Is that right? You know, I have to say, for me, you really talk a little bit more about, you know, the ego because you have your feelings, you know, you have a lot of attraction and everything. I really was in the middle of, you know, when I split with my first partner after five and a half years. And then before I really got stable again in something which made sense for me and purpose. I was just lost. I was just like having an instant and you know, all those kind of things. And I even didn't know if it was ego or just my kind of physical, you know, kind of what it was in. Later even I just felt like maybe I need to be very cautious because men are very physical and I was very easily lost in this energy. You know, just let it happen. And then actually that led me to really find my sexuality to really own my sexuality and to really respect my sexuality yeah. and to really respect myself and be confident in the sexual energy and again, not allow anybody to come and just mm -hmm. mess with this. Especially not allow me to mess with that because I really needed to build on something in the life. And that's turning point very often because you start realizing that you are the important thing. You can do something like that because it's actually addiction. It can be pattern. It can be whatever like that. And you only, when you see it all over again happening, you can say, hang a minute, I'm missing on something here. Set yourself short, right? Yeah. You and then you go again, short. again, again, and then you just kind of like, if I didn't do it, what would happen? Maybe I try next time. You know, and you are in the same situation, you know, trampling, and you're saying, no, I'm worthy, maybe I can wait another week. You know, what will happen between us? Or something like that. In five minutes. <laughs> And then, and then actually you start really seeing yourself that what happened was very empowering, was very, really encouraging you to really, you know, be visible for something else, you know, something much more powerful. And then you're just watching it, you're just watching, everybody loves your energy and you just watch that. And it's beautiful and you can use the energy and you can actually find out what those people really need from you to be really sharing. Can you see the whole cycle? It's like the stupa, you know, in Buddhist. It's just something which we have to really, and this is why I would recommend Tantra a lot. Because it's not only Tantra, when you study Tantra, you bring a lot of different kind of methods. You know, if it's about physicality, about your body, it could be even dance and singing, and you know, kind of feeling the music through all your senses. It could be really kind of like psychological, yeah, kind of reprogramming of our kind of stuck patterns and habits and everything like that. It can be really something like meditation and anything, basically anything, you know. We studied Tantra and along the way we basically start finding amazing methods like Bang Haiti, you know, lovely dances and things like that. And you start really interact with people who are really on this level as well. So you much, kind of much more consciously <coughs> be uh, witnessing where you are, where you're heading. So it's not only like trying to do about processing and really learning and you know, teaching yourself to really stay a little bit indifferent, you know, kind of be the pillow and embrace all that to kind of um, complete you, yeah, in a sense. Complete you as a, as a man, you know, as a man, like as a, as a person to be able to express and share yourself in the world on all levels. Yeah, yeah, I've, uh, I've heard it described, and I've only got a few minutes, so I'll just I'll wrap up. I've heard it described, uh, yeah, imagine there's, <coughs> there's a building with seven floors, yeah, and normal sex is like getting in at the ground floor, normal sex, normal orgasm, and, and then press, and pressing the emergency stop button. <laughs> you know, it's so limited how much we're using the sexual energy. Like, there's so many levels, and such, uh, 
it's such incredibly depth you can go to in the sexual energy, and we just limit it because of addictive patterns, because of habitual patterns, because of what we learn at school, or what we learn from the TV, you know, what they do on TV, and we just have this, this little window of this very superficial kind of experience, and we think that's it, and there's a whole other world, and that's the difference, like normal sex is very, is very unconscious, very habitual, yeah, and, you're, and in Tantra, you're, you're really bringing consciousness into, sex, into your sexual energy. And that's the difference. Uh, and, and certainly, certainly, I would recommend it. <laughs> it's great. Uh, and the question is? And I think we need to wrap up, so maybe another question after the break. Uh, and, uh, and certainly, certainly what you experience, what you think you experience at the moment in terms of uh, your sexual orgasm and experience is a fraction of what you experience in Tantra. In a tantra, you just take it to a whole nother level, yeah. And so it's a whole different dimension of orgasm and climax for both men, men and wi women. So both are experiencing sexual energy at a completely different level of consciousness. I'd love to just say one thing. I would never believe that tantra will teach me so much about men and about myself. You know, it's you're starting really looking at the partner and the other sex with absolutely different way, absolute respect and absolute kind of like, you know, it's um, unlimited expansion in your life for yourself as well. And I think something like that we are really, you know, looking for as well, really looking forward to, you know, kind of experience because that's the expansion, you know, in the relationship and it doesn't need to be only partnership. You know, you start experiencing really generally in your family, in the world, but you are learning a lot from each other. There is, you know, there is nothing who is more. It's absolute equality. Yeah, that's what I would like. You know, it's differences, but it's equality. Uh, yeah. I, I could listen to you like all night, but some of these have got a small amount of uh, memory banks and small bladders. Just, 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 just before we break, just, just want to say yeah, two yeah. quick things. Just before the break, first of all, after the break, we're going to actually do some tantric exercises. Don't really keep your clothes on, <laughs> but a chance to kind of connect with the energy. So we'll do some practical <clears throat> stuff after the break. So please stay for that. I'm going to introduce Jagindra Martin. Thank you. Cheers. Paul for coming up uh, to the second half of the talk. It'll be about 40 minutes, and then if there's a few questions and answers, and uh, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, I would like to start with a joke, which is from Osho. And so there, there's a couple, and uh, he's complaining about his wife that. Basically, she's not giving him really fulfillment. There's no sex. Whenever it's like, oh, I have a headache, you know, I have a headache. I can't, I can't, you know. And he said, you know, there is a really, really lovely herbalist, kind of, you know, natural doctor in the village. You can, you can try, go there, see him, and let's see if it helps. And I said, mm, all right then, I will go there. So she goes to see the, the guy. And he said, I won't give you any pills. I give you some kind of herbs, but also I give you affirmation. So you have to say a couple of times per day, you know, just still repeating. So she's repeating, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. And in about three days, she's fine. She's suddenly like full of energy and she would like to have a sex. So then, you know, the, the evening comes and suddenly he can't have an erection. So nothing is happening again. And she said, well, now I'm so aroused and you can't, you can't do that. So why don't you go to the herbalist as well and just ask him for some help? He's really good, he can help you. And I said, all right then. So he went to the herbalist, to the natural kind of doctor. And he said, so here are those couple of affirmations. And you have to say 21 times, three times per day. But don't tell your wife. That's a secret. Okay, so no problem, great doctor. So he went home, and anytime he was on the toilet, in the bath, going outside, walking, he was still repeating his affirmation. And then the wife always wanted to kind of catch him, but he 
it, he didn't. And in a couple of days, he was full of light and full of life, and then they had the most amazing sex. And would you like to know what he was repeating? <laughs> She's not my wife, she's not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and why, why I wanted to say this joke, because there were a couple of people who asked me, you know, when we really are struggling with having orgasm, or being really, you know, being able to really have the attraction, where it's coming first from, what do you think? Where is the third, first thing where it's coming that we really feel attractive or we really get to the point we have orgasm? Exactly. It's here. The mind is the place. Whenever you think of someone, even the person is not in front of you, can you get really attractive? Can you get really turned on? You can, don't you? So it's as simple as you know, as you know, probably already with law of attraction. You know, you are unlimited. You are absolutely unlimited. You can do whatever you want. And there are so many people who are really complaining. You know, like I can't get orgasm with my partner. It's just there, really. What is the problem? Find it. What is it all about? That? Yeah. And it's very often where it starts, because very often we don't feel the fulfillment inside us and we blame on the other people. Yeah. And you really have to be responsible for your own pleasure and for your own happiness in your life. So please don't be a victim. Please don't blame the other. Really look inside. Where is the joy? Where is the happiness? Where is the sweetness? Where is the ec ecstasy? And where is really the moment where you know, I get whatever I want? And of course there is other things because sometimes it can be very just physical and you really need help or you really need to ask them for change, direction, whatever it is. Or you can maybe really need to sort some emotional stuckness in between you that it flows the energy, you know, the loveliness, the beautiful, and so on and so on. Okay? So, did I give you something to think now? <laughs> yeah, the key, the key is the mind. In terms of the key is the mind. Uh, has anyone got a voice in their head? Have you got a voice in their head? Like that's chattering all the time? Yeah, is that is it just me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what what kind of things is the voice saying? It could, a lot of negativity, quite often, isn't it? Like I'm not good enough, or I forgot to do this, or I should have done that, whatever. And and you know, some of us got two voices in our mind. We might have three. But this chatterbox is what is what makes us unpresent, or or asleep, or unconscious to the present moment. We miss the now because our voices are chattering away about the past or the future. And we lose the power and the energy of the moment. Yeah, and it's the voice in the head which then takes us away from all our life experience and the depth and richness of what is here, here, here right now, including our sexual energy as well as everything else. And so the key, the, the first key in Tantra is to quieten the mind and, and to bring that stillness to the mind and then take that in to our sexual, uh, into the sexual act and into our sexual energy. The key is the mind and the key to stilling the mind, which uh, many, many spiritual teachers have found for more different uh, disciplines, is the breath. It's just following the breath. It's a very simple method to still the mind and then bring that practice so into our lovemaking, so it becomes a lovemaking meditation. So uh, we're going to, the first tantric queen we're going to look at is conscious breathing. So yeah, you want to take people through the conscious breathing. And why do you breath? It's because the breath is always the first thing which happens when you're born the first thing which goes away when you're dying. 
So if that makes you really alive, that makes you really full of you know, something. It's the breath, it's the energy, uh, the, the breathing is the continuity of ourselves to be alive. So, you can maybe ask. So, I would love to invite you again to just sit comfortably. And if you are not sitting in lodges, just really, really be grounded on the floor. Feeling, you can even take your shoes off if you would like to just really feel the ground. Oh, wow. That's even better, you don't need to be embarrassed. Nobody sees it. I can't see So, just really, really kind of see that you can gently gently each part of your body just loose and make your body really kind of straight but flexible at the same time. And make sure that your spine is straight. You know, it's not rigid but it's straight. That you are almost like a pillow full of light and energy. Just gently close your eyes. See if you can relax even more, especially your joints and muscles. Muscles in your eyes, around your eyes and in your face. And relaxing your head, your neck, your shoulders, your arms, your fingertips. And just taking a deep breath in. spine, your belly, your pelvic, your tights, your knees, your ankles, and your toes. And just gently bring your breath with your consciousness, so breathing with your consciousness, just being fascinating how you are taking in the air from the outside into your body and breathing out and sharing your inner breath with everything around you. And you can gently open your mouth and breathe in and out through your mouth just to feel the sensation. Just really, really relaxing in your face. Follow your pace, just follow your breath, and just be really conscious, witnessing your breath, each breath, each breath is expansion. Just make sure that you can feel the air, feel the breath, feeling the coldness and the warmness. And you can just make a little tiny sound if you're aware that you're breathing. You can hear yourself. And 
don't worry about the others, just concentrate on your own breath. And now, just very, very gently, stay with your breath, just opening your eyes. you see is fine, just be aware of yourself. Just be very, very present. Feeling yourself, your energy, the energy of the space. You can just just feels less busy yeah. you know, because the mind can't think of two things at the same time so as you focus on your breath you, you, you go away from all the stories and all the chatterboxes and then it, it 
the natural becomes still that you can fill the whole room as it becomes still. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's more beneficial to get it really everyone's different? Group, uh, doing it as a group is very powerful because collectively there's a powerful energy created yeah. and we're all doing it together. So actually it's very powerful what we just did as a because we, we all stored our minds together and so we all helped each other energetically. So actually it's very powerful to do group meditation. Yeah, yeah so what we did was very powerful. Yeah, the group dynamic mm. is really very different than individual. But very often with people like you, I would say you practice on your own first before you also feel more using, comfortable. Initially using a mantra uh -huh. instead of the breath. And so I don't have to make a noise. Yeah. Was it the thing that you, you would be disturbed by the noise? Especially? Embarrassed, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we always say to people whenever we do some exercise and they really feel like, you know, almost like embarrassed of their own breath or the breath of the others. You know, whenever you feel this is very uncomfortable, it's very often the signs you need to do this more. <laughs> you know, there's something where we are scared of our own, you know, visual or movement, whatever it is. Very often we really need to experience that more to get used to that because we, we locked ourselves. So whenever, you know, whenever you feel like someone is really having so much fun, you know, screaming or whatever, some people would say, like, I can't stand that. <laughs> but actually, it's a sign you should be screaming more and celebrating more as well. Yeah, there's something which wants to come out. That's why it's disturbing us, because it wants to come out. Yeah. But very often, it's really the gentleness around yourself, because we are not used to do that. But, you know, on a regular basis, you probably don't go to the work and in the morning you do practice exercise or whatever like that. So it's really, you know, getting some routine and really exercise. You fall down, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I just stretch back too far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you relaxed into the power. Yeah, a bit yeah. too, a bit too relaxed. relaxed yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of space behind. <laughs> but that, yeah, that, that conscious breathing practice which is very, very powerful. It's very simple, but it can totally transform your life if you bring that into any aspect of your life. You bring it into your love making, it takes it to a much higher level of consciousness. So a very simple foundational tool there, uh, which is very, very powerful. So if you remember only one thing from uh, this evening's talk, you take that away with you and you apply it, mm -hmm. you will find immediate results in your energy and the shift and the whole, your whole life experience will become richer as well. And you bring your love making, if you bring it into your love making as well, so it becomes a love making meditation effectively, which is a much deeper experience. And this is just the beginning. You will go a little bit further if you practice tantra. You, know, you really go and lots of exercises, especially kind of meditation, exercise more and more deeper. Could could you recommend any food? Because obviously five pints and a curry <laughs> is probably isn't good for your harmonic frequencies at all. So you know, like uh, you know, for the for the uh, raising of the. Uh, I'm an Irish Catholic, so I can't even say the word. This, this is the experience. Uh, what what foods? You mean some kind of like natural biogra? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we have. No. That's why I wish to put it. Super <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of the raw kind of superfoods ingredients is maca, and it's it caused like natural biogra in, invigorate endocrine system and it really helps balancing hormones and everything. So maca. it's good for men and. And I don't know generally. I know that very often when you do tantra, you are really strictly, you know, asked to not really use anything which is very overpowering, things like garlic, you know, too much onion, and something like that, because it's stimulating. So you really want to be in kind of balance. If you are very often when you are practicing you're with other people. What is the maca? Maca is uh, kind of like sweet powder, and it's coming, I think, from Peru, and it's from family of broccoli, radish, things, this, this kind of vegetables. So it's you know kind of uh, uh, how you say root vegetable, yeah, it's sweet. So I'm adding it as well to cakes and chocolates and anything. And 
Not for me, for a Sexual, it can be just kind of normal kind of things. They basically meditate until they get, kind of get out of the last, something like that. So kind of you transform that through seeing that and having fancy and imagination and kind of meditate on that. Yeah. It's very beautiful actually. There's a picture of, of that. I think this is from that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's there's one question about, say for example, if you have disabilities, like, is, the, is time to accept accessible to people with disabilities? Sure. Definitely it is. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, it's not an obsession about positions. No, no, no. <laughs> it's no, not at all. making jokes. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, the position stuff, that's all an external stuff. It's an internal shift mm -hmm. in experience you're looking at. It, it's an inner transformation of your energy, which you're doing, uh, and so, and so it doesn't really. <laughs> it's more how you're using your energy. You're using your breath. You use it. You're, you're stilling the mind. You're bringing that higher consciousness into your, into your experience, I and mean, that's beyond the body. I mean, what this describes is much more than the position, because the position. I'm sure that every, every of you will be finding a different position much more comfortable. Or much more exciting or whatever like that but the main thing here if you see that a little bit they are really looking into each other's eyes yeah. and this is one of the tantric exercises well, as, as simple as that to really looking each, to each other's eyes and to really honor the <coughs> quality yeah. so it's really like bowing to each other you know, to see the equality the divinity No, I mean what you're doing is that is that you're just you're 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 you're, 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 you're not looking at you're, what you're looking at is that is that the person's soul, their spirit, yeah. So you're looking at the God in them, which reflects the God in you. You're seeing the oneness, the eternity, yeah in the spirit that is shown, that, that appears as two separate bodies, but isn't it in fact the oneness appearing in duality. So it's a very spiritual experience because you effectively see yourself in them, they see themselves in you, and you see the oneness yeah. of the whole of existence played out through two people. You know, so, so it's a very spiritual eye gazing that you're doing. You're looking beyond the body and into the spirit. Um, who has experience? It's kind of moment when you even maybe knew someone for a long time and suddenly you just really knew them. Just by connected eye to eye. Okay, okay, not so many of you. So it's something like, you know, when you have normal connection every day. And I have to say, very often we experience that with children. 
you know, children are very patient. They just look and stare at you. They really want to get all your essence while you're talking to them. They are not affected by emotions like something like, I don't want to even respond to her now. You know, or, you know all those kind of masks and all those layers which we have it's normally. Person, someone, someone look into our eyes and we already know that we don't, we don't want to talk to them, for example. You see that? But with kids, they're just so fascinating. That's new. That's something. What will I see right now? You see that it's it's a look where you really stare at each other like for the first time in your life. Like you were never experienced something like that. You were never seen this person before actually. And it's always like that. But you really take this time to really look into each other's eyes. You always see something always find something absolutely amazing. And it can be just beauty because it's the reflection of you. It can be just beauty, it can be just calmness, it can be whatever, but it's always the dance between you yourself and it's very much the reflection of you as well. You know, so many people, you know, they go to spiritual places and they see some beautiful but you know, follow the spiritual path for a long time and you know, meditate to them sit down with them, they're kind of like, their, their eyes are kind of like really calm waters and uh, they, can, they can see all of the conflicts in your eyes and in your life, all the conflicts in your life. Mm -hmm. so. It's the stillness which creates this knowing, it's that you're so still that, you know, the, the message, the truth basically arrives. And, you know, that's something which we really lost because we don't have time. You know, we all say, like, I don't have time to even sit with you. Yeah, or I just want to really have my cup of tea. Like, what is it? Why we don't look each, to each other, you know? We would know so much about each, each other. So much. But eye contact's scary in our society, I think. If you, if you actually look into somebody's eyes for more than a few seconds... So why do you think that it's so scary? I think because I think... Well, maybe we all wear a mask and as soon as you see that they're wearing a mask and they're unsure of their foot in, in their life, you suddenly go, oh Christ, <laughs> that's, that's me that is. That's so as I said, there's the natural aversion and this 15 second assessment is from normally from straight from the face to the <coughs> genitals maybe. Or, <coughs> so if you ask, you know, like the person that sees a crime and they've all got a different image of the person that committed the crime, they all saw the same person. Yeah. But they're not actually looking. I'm just sort of skim glimpse and then we move on quickly. But you know, when you realise that beyond the layers and beyond the mask, it's real you, the most beautiful and divine you know, human being and spirit, then people really, you know, more <coughs> melt into that, kind of are open to do that. But very often we really wear the mask because if you meet someone in the office, you don't want to stare into their eyes. <laughs> you really don't want to know their secret. And that's how we are. We are living corporate life most of the time. Can you see that? We don't yeah. want to we digest the other person, do we? It's like a digestion, isn't it, with the eyes? Is that what you're saying? It's yeah. very much reflection, really. Oh, reflection. Yeah, it's really reflection. Yeah. We don't want to give uh, the wrong idea either, do we? Yeah. That we're perhaps more interested in yeah. interested in them. Yeah, than you know, you always very, 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 very true because you always see in the person what you want to see, isn't it? That's what is the reflection. We always really want to see what is there, but when we really let go of that, we might be fascinating what's coming because yes. the laugh, you know, and the beauty and the kind of nurturing just happening in between those people is just enormous. Yeah, and you know, uh, we're, we're looking beyond the illusion, you know, all the spiritual paths, you know, many of them say, there is only one of us here, you know, there's only one eye in this room, appearing as many bodies, and so when you look beyond that, and you look in someone's eyes, you eventually you see yourself, because there only is one consciousness, one field of consciousness, appearing as separate beings, and so, uh, so as you drop and you merge, there is that sudden, wow, let go of this individual separate, trying to be an individual separate self, 
which, which, which creates the struggle and, and creates the, the tension. And you realize that you're actually you're one with everything and everything is one with you. And this is what we're doing in the eye gazing, you know, and in the tantra practice, which is to go beyond all the veils, all the masks, all the social conditioning, and to totally see the person's spirit, which is one with your spirit. And then, and then that's an incredibly, you know, uh, spiritual experience in which you're connecting with the whole universe. And that, that's what we all long for. And it's also, you know, when we always joke, like, now we take your clothes off. <laughs> You know, it's actually about much more than taking the clothes off. It's really being naked as we are. Can you see that? It's, you know, if we really have everything sorted in our life, everybody would take the clothes off right now because there is nothing to be, you know, ashamed of. The nakedness is really in our mind again. You know, to be really totally, you know, pure and naked is just really through here. And you know, we all, all our spirits, we long to see and be seen. And how rarely does, does someone just let all the masks and all the barriers down and see you and you allow them to, you know, to, you know, you know it's so rare in our society, you know, to really allow all this to drop and to see and be seen. And this is, you know, <laughs> this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing, you know. And isn't it, isn't it the big saying, yes, I want that? Is it we do get it. It's two weeks every year. <laughs> <laughs> Normally in a foreign country, and suddenly everyone experiences this oneness with nature, and then they get back on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I tell you one thing. Coming back, you know, this is the vicious circle, because you're saying two, two weeks, like yeah. it's a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, since we really manage to make the transition and. I would say I was very much kind of supporting Jogindu to do that because when I was about, let's say, 21, my dad really helped me to become as a self-employed. And I really, really, you know, from now, like, when I look back, I really struggle with the imagination that I would be working with someone. I just can't imagine that, really. It's just like once you have the freedom, you can't go back into any employment. And I did it a couple of times, and it was really, really struggle. You know, for me. Yeah. And then to get it as a solicitor, can you see that? Even I could say, "Great money, let's just you know relax. That's mm -hmm. fine as we are." But I just felt like there is always something more. You can relax now, but this is the end of your life. You know, this is as we get to some habits, and we will have a great holiday. Yeah. You know, we will have a great house and everything like that which I wish we will have anyway, in a way that you really appreciate that much more. Mm -hmm. Because this is absolutely up to you what you're creating every day now. And you know, the adventures which we are experiencing every day, just working with each other, it's just phenomenal. It's just, you know, it's, it's priceless, really priceless. Oh, it I never, never really cover anything. <laughs> 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 But why we are here, why we are here is to say, it's possible for anybody, it's possible, why not? And more and more people really at least thinking of how can I do the transition? And it is really possible. Separation. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to work, say for example, wherever you work, like you know, they put you in a formation where you can't see each other. Mm -hmm. You just look at a screen or your welding ten hours a day. That's something that we need to change. You know, we need to have at least a minimum of two people working together in any job at any time. Ideally, so that people can have conversations and get to know. Get to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, we've been brainwashing to separation. We're From all separate. The you know, right from the beginning, the beginning. <coughs> yeah, and actually the truth is we are all one, and we're starting to see we're all one. It doesn't matter race, creed, color, whatever we are, we're all one. It's the same consciousness, 
And once we start to see that, we will heal so much in the world. We come together like this, like all over the world, people are coming together. We start to realize we are one family, we are one consciousness, and there is no separation. <laughs> we're all interdependent, we're all interconnected, energetically, spiritually, in every way. There is no separation. If you hurt, I hurt, you know, we all need to support each other and, and help each other. And so, and so, you know, we're all family, we're all family, and, and you know, this is what we're seeing more, the brainwashing of separation was never the truth, it never felt true, and it was, it was creating all these divides and all this hatred and all this kind of conflict between people, which was, you know, was all from the brainwashing, but once but, we drop that, yeah. we see the oneness. But I would like to say, you know, it's really easy to say, just drop it. <laughs> you know, it's harder to really do that. And you know, I think we really need to follow our pace in whatever we do, you know, the transition. Because as I said, you know, I came to UK after having my own business for nine years, you know, living and working in the same house, you know, being very much supported also by my parents as well, and doing, you know, a job as a beautician and holistic therapist, which wasn't, which absolutely wasn't uh, paid enough at all. You know, that is still in this Europe kind of the mentality that this is a service, you know, and we won't pay you so much. Then I came here, it was, you know, didn't, didn't, they didn't pay me so much, but only until I really said I will be working on my own and then I could, could charge whatever I, I felt like. So that was this kind of shift that suddenly I really had more money than ever I could imagine, just with a couple of clients, for example, per day or per week. So it's like you really need to see where you are and what you can do because Jikinder also couldn't really leave this straight away. There was so much fear, so much kind of, you know, what will happen. Even now he's sometimes saying like, I really love what we are doing, but sometimes I'm missing the money. <laughs> you know, and it's honest, you know, it's fine. It's the progression. But then, you know, we just kind of felt, okay, if I do my hobby really well, you know, there will be like 10% of real fulfillment, like this Tuesday evenings. You know, something which, you know, someone has to create that. Even when we started with Tree of Love, I remember you can say like, I could really go to London every week and, you know, have a great weekend and just, you know, socialize with my friends there. And I don't have anybody here. But maybe I'm the person who can create something like that and create the friends here as well. Can you see that? It's just the courage. And the, the creation, yeah. yeah, you turn it around. Nobody else will do that for you. And when we start turning around, I tell you, even the government will be shaking. You know, we know this all. Like, if we start turning this around, even in the consciousness, you know, the fear, it's not coming from us, but from the other people who want to lead other people. Yeah. It's Tuesday. C H O O S E. Is it? So. <laughs> so me and Sue can we use one? Sue. Hello, one. Hello, one. Hello, one. Hello, one. Just checking. <laughs> me too. Yeah, should we wrap it up? Because I think yeah. it's been a lovely but talk. I don't know if you want another five minutes or. Just gonna we, did, we yeah. just quickly just do a couple of announcements. If that's yeah, okay. cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would love to say thank you so much because <coughs> I could feel that after meditation, yeah. did you see how the whole energy kind of settled down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like how we can really be open even for different you know, kind of talk and encouragement. So yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think we should give a round of applause.